Today's video feature is a comprehensive review of everything to expect if you're charged with a South Carolina DUI. Now, it's a rather lengthy video, but if you go to the very end, you will have a full understanding of what you're facing and what to expect. So let's get started. We start with the stop, and usually it's you're driving down the road and you see blue lights behind you. You turn on your blinker, you pull over to the side, and you wait for the officer or trooper to come to your door. Now, the trooper or officer will ask you a series of questions, usually things like give us your license and registration. And while you're reaching for those documents, they will also be asking you additional questions. This is part of their DUI investigation. It's called divided attention test, where you're asked to answer questions while you're doing something physical, the same way your mind has to work when you're operating a vehicle. The next thing is they'll ask you to step out of the car and go to the back of the car where they'll ask you some additional questions and then they'll perform some field sobriety tests and we have videos on those issues as well. The three standardized tests are the horizontal gaze nystagmus test which is basically an eye exam, then the walk and turn, and then the one leg stand. Some officers and troopers use some additional tests like the Romberg balance test and some counting tests and maybe some alphabets and reverse tests things like that, but there are only three standardized tests. After that, they make the decision to arrest. They arrest you, put your handcuffs on, and then read you your Miranda warnings in front of the dash camera in their car. Next, they put you in the back of the car. If you're an officer or a deputy, if you're a trooper, they don't have a cage, so they put you in the front seat. And then you have the long drive from the street to the police station, and during that time, there is awkward silence. Now, You've been advised that you have the right to remain silent, and we certainly encourage all of our clients to do just that. However, silence again is very awkward and uncomfortable, so sometimes you get some discussions in the car that we would rather not deal with. You start talking about what you've been doing that evening and some other things that we would rather just be left out because everything that's inside that vehicle is also being recorded just like it was when you were doing the testing at the street. Now, when you get back to the police station, you get uh, the opportunity to submit to breath test. In South Carolina, we encourage you to exercise the right to refuse same because we just don't believe in machines and we just don't believe in that so-called breath test science. But regardless, we can take care of your case and defend your case whether you take the breath test or not. Now, once you get through processing, then you're going to appear in front of a magistrate and you'll get some type of bond. You may be released on your own recognizance and then you get to go home and hopefully get some sleep because most likely it has been a very long, tiring, stressful evening for you. And then once you get some rest, then you can start your search for DUI defense lawyers. Now, if you call our firm, you're going to call either myself or Zach Fry. Zach Fry is a former South Carolina DUI prosecutor, and I've been practicing law now for over 31 years. You'll get to talk to us directly and over the phone. You don't have to make an appointment or come down and schedule a time to meet with us. We want to get answers to you just as quickly as possible. We'll ask you some questions about that evening, and then we'll ask you if you want to go forward with representation. Now, even pre-COVID, we had the ability to send our clients an electronic retainer, which they could sign over the internet. And then, of course, we can take payment over the phone by credit card or debit card. And then we get started. We will send out a letter to the court where your case is going to be heard. We'll indicate that you are now represented by counsel. We'll ask that um, the first court date be waived and that they send us all evidence associated with your case. So in the paperwork that you got when you got released, there'll typically be two court dates. The first court date, if you're represented, will be removed from the calendar. That means you do not have to go and neither do we. If you don't have a lawyer, you will have to appear. And at that initial appearance, it will be basically, are you pleading guilty, not guilty? Do you want to represent yourself, uh, get a court appointed attorney or hire private counsel? And since if you hire a lawyer, all those questions are answered, then that is not necessary. By the time the second court appearance date comes up, we usually have the evidence in the form of DVDs and other evidence, other papers um, that we will have had a chance to review and then negotiate with the prosecutor to see if there's some way to reach a plea agreement in your case. So by the time the second court date comes up, we will have everything. We will be able to give you some clear advice and recommendations on how to proceed. We'll go over the plea offer if there is one, and then we'll give you our opinion on whether that is a good deal or a bad deal. Now, whether to go forward with trial or to accept a plea offer is always your decision. You are the client. We work for you, and you know what is best for you and your family after you hear our recommendations and we answer your questions.
Now, if you accept the plea offer, we can sign it in the office. It's an affidavit, so you may never have to appear in court again. If you want to go to trial, of course, that's a completely different matter. And then we will get ready for trial. Now, even pre-COVID, there was a several month delay. Now, with COVID, we're not sure when jury trials are going to come up again. But when they do, Zach and I prepare for the case. We try these cases together in almost every instance and we present your case and we defend your, your case in court in front of a jury. A jury of six will decide your fate. So what we generally tell folks is this, if we have any ability to get something less than a DUI or a DUAC, DUI is driving under the influence, DUAC is driving with an unlawful alcohol concentration. They're essentially exactly the same in terms of everything, including punishment. So if there's anything less than DUI or DUAC, then it may be a good option for you to take, such as reckless driving, or maybe we've had other deals where you've got multiple traffic tickets and up to 10 points. So again, it is your decision. We're going to give you our guidance and our advice. But again, you make all the decisions because it is your case in your life. Now, this is a lot of information. We understand that. There's going to be questions. You are more than welcome to reach out to us directly. My name is Robert Reeves. My mobile number is 704-351-7979, or you can email me, robert, at rjrlaw.com. Hope it helps.